Hey everybody, welcome. Thanks for joining us. So today we will be talking about articulatory phonetics. This is the study of how speech sounds are produced in the vocal tract. All of our articulators in our vocal tracts must work in concert to produce just one speech sound. This is to say nothing of the complexity of these motor routines in casual speech. So just a note, we will be focusing on the phonetics of spoken languages and more specifically uh, consonant sounds in North American English in this video. So what's the difference between consonants and vowels, you might ask? Well, basically, consonants involve some constriction of airflow, whereas vowels do not. When linguists describe consonant sounds, we use three criteria voicing, place of articulation, and manner of articulation. Let's talk about each of these in turn. Voicing, or state of the glottis, refers to what the vocal folds are doing. When air passes through open vocal folds, we call these voiceless sounds. When air passes through vibrating vocal folds, we call these voiced sounds. You can feel the difference between voiced and voiceless sounds by putting your hand right here on your Adam's apple if you're a male or where your Adam's apple would be if you're a female. So produce these two sounds in succession. S, z, s, z. Which one produces the vibration? You should feel that z produces a vibration, so it's a voiced sound, whereas s does not produce the vibration, so it's a voiceless sound. Place of articulation refers to where in the vocal tract the constriction of airflow takes place. Bilabial sounds are produced with both lips, like p, b, m. Labiodental sounds are produced with the upper teeth and the lower lip, such as f, v. Interdental sounds are produced with the tongue in between the upper and lower teeth, such as th, th. Alveolar sounds are produced with the tongue at or near the ridge right behind the upper front teeth, such as t, d, s. Palatal sounds are produced at the hard palate or the roof of the mouth, such as Sh, yeah. Velar sounds are produced at the velum or soft palate, such as k, g. And glottal sounds are produced at the glottis or the space between the vocal folds, such as h, or the catch in the throat, as in Batman. Manner of articulation refers to how the airflow is constricted in the vocal tract. Stop sounds result from a complete constriction of airflow, followed by a release of that air, such as p, t, k, b, d, g. Fricatives are sounds produced when the tongue approaches but does not make contact with a place of articulation, causing a bottleneck of the airflow. And this gives the sound a friction-like quality, such as v, Z, sh. Affricates result from a sequence of stop plus fricative in rapid succession. So the affricate ch represents t plus sh, just as the affricate j results from d plus j. Nasal sounds are produced when the velum is lowered, allowing air to pass through the nasal cavity such as m, m, m. Liquid sounds are produced by allowing air to pass by one or both sides of the tongue, and the tongue itself can move a lot to shape the sound, such as ul, er. Glide sounds are produced with very little constriction of airflow, so little, in fact, that they are often referred to as semivowels, such as W, y. And finally, we have tap sounds. Tap sounds involve a rapid flick of the tongue to some place of articulation. In North American English, we only really have one tap, and that's at the alveolar ridge.
you can hear the tap sound in the word butter. Butter. Now notice where we write it with two T's in English that your tongue is producing a tap sound there rather than a full stop or plosive sound. So in North American English you say butter. Now as compared to in received pronunciation where you say butter, that involves a full t stop. Okay, we've discussed these three criteria for describing consonant sounds. Voicing, place of articulation, and manner of articulation. And when linguists talk about a consonant sound, they do so in that order. So, for example, the sound b is considered a voiced bilabial stop. S is a voiceless alveolar fricative. Hey everyone, thanks for joining us. Welcome. In this video, we will be talking about how linguists describe vowel sounds. Uh, so just a couple of notes. Um, first, again, like in the consonant video, we'll only be talking about the phonetics of spoken languages rather than signed languages. And we will be talking about the vowel sounds as they are used in North American English. There are two types of vowel sounds, monophthongs and diphthongs. Monophthongs involve one vowel quality, and diphthongs involve two vowel qualities. Now, when linguists are describing vowel sounds, we have to rely on a different set of criteria from what we used in describing consonants, because, remember, vowels do not involve a constriction of airflow in the vocal tract, so our tongue doesn't approach an anatomical landmark like they do with consonants. So the three criteria that linguists use when describing vowel sounds are height, backness, and roundedness. Let's talk about each of these in turn. Height refers to how high or low the tongue is in the mouth when producing the vowel. For example, consider the vowel sounds E and AH. If you say both of these vowels in succession, you should feel your tongue going up and down as you say E, AH, E, AH, E, AH. In terms of height, vowels are either considered high, mid, or low. E is an example of a high vowel, and A ah is an example of a low vowel. Backness refers to how far front or back the tongue is when producing the vowel. As with vowel height, this can be tricky as it takes some practice, but consider the vowels E and U. If you say these vowels in succession, you may notice that your tongue is moving forward and backward as you say E, U, E, U, E, U. In terms of backness, vowels are either considered front, central, or back. Remember that E is a high vowel, but it's also a front vowel, while U is a back vowel. The third criteria that linguists use when describing vowels is roundedness. Roundedness means whether or not the lips are rounded when producing the vowel. Now this is something that's very easy as you can feel and see when you are producing a rounded sound or when the person that you're talking to is producing a rounded sound. So again, take the two sounds that we just used, E and U. U, as you can clearly see and feel, is a rounded vowel, whereas E is not a rounded vowel. E. Just like with consonants, there is a specific order that linguists use when describing vowel sounds. It is height, then backness, then roundedness. For example, U is a high back rounded vowel. A is a low front unrounded vowel. Remember, so far we've only been talking about monophthong vowels. 
If we want to categorize diphthongs in terms of these criteria, we must do so for the starting vowel quality as well as the ending vowel quality. But we won't worry about that in this video.